Good afternoon, this is Aurora folks, and today we're here in Mamaroneck, New York at the March for Our Lives event. Today there will be thousands of students, teachers, and activists all alike here for one unifying message to end gun violence. We've had enough! We've had enough! We've had enough. Three small words that held a huge meaning behind them and echoed among over 3,000 participants walking in Mamaroneck's March for Our Lives event. Students who would normally use this day off from school to relax instead marched in solidarity leaving many older generations to reflect on this impactful day. So fascinating. This is happening across the country, not just here. You know, you know, the hip, it's over 3,000 people, you know, kids and adults, you know, come here, you know, on a Saturday afternoon, it's unheard of. You know, maybe the youth of today can accomplish what maybe the older generations have not been able to. You know, it just, it, and it's just common sense. So it's fantastic. My family scattered across the country. My mom is 81. She's down in Annapolis. She just sent me a photo of her marching down in Annapolis. My sister uh, in Northern California is out there marching and cheering. And none of us have kids at this age anymore, but we stand firm with our neighbors and our friends because this enough is enough. How, how amazing it is to have all of these young students out here really fighting for a cause that really hits close to home. And it's, it's actually more than that, because they, when you talk to them, they understand what they're doing. It's not just, oh, well, let's do, you know, it's a thing to do today. They really understand it, and they really have, are passionate about it. And, you know, gun control, a lot of friends of mine, you know, have guns, and I talk to them about that. And they're members of the, you know, the Rifle Association and whatever, and they're all for gun control. There's no, no reason to have assault rifles, period. There's no reason not to have background checks. You know, it's not an invasion of civil liberties, it's common sense. Former anti-Vietnam War marcher Joyce Bermel found herself inspired by the magnitude of the event and taken back to her days in activism. What brought me down here is the safety of the next generation and the future of our democracy. I agree, and how do you feel about all these young students coming out? This is such a huge turnout at this kind of march for a lot of young people to be out in in years even. How do you feel about that? The last time I marched was against the Vietnam War, and I think this is the largest march and the most energetic that I have seen since then. I see it, a lot of parallels between those generations. I think they've had this fear for a long time. They've grown up with it, and now they're saying we're not going to take it anymore, and it's only because of them that we're going to get anything done. That's the only way that change will come about. Kate, if you could just tell me how you feel about being at this march today and what it means to you as a young student going to school and dealing with this in this day and age. I feel people shouldn't have to be scared to go to school every morning. Like, I don't, when I wake up, I shouldn't have to think, what would I do if someone comes into my school and wants to shoot me? And we shouldn't have to be in our classrooms and our teachers have to explain what to do if something like that happens. I was in English the other day and we were talking about this and my English teacher had to explain to us what to do in this situation. We shouldn't have to feel that way. We shouldn't have to be scared and worried about our children and their lives and their safety just for going to a place to learn. <laughs> I agree. And what made you specifically come out today? Who are, are you fighting for anyone in particular or? I don't know any of the Parkland victims, but I know people who did know them and I know that they had families and friends and lives and they'll never be able to have jobs or go to college or families of their own. And were you an activist before today or is like how was this for you stepping into this role and really stepping up to make to raise your voice? Um it's important because the children are the future. Without our children, who are we? Following a string of school shootings, most recently involving the killing of two students by 17-year-old Austin Rowlings at Great Mills High School in Maryland,
companies such as Walmart and Kroger have raised the ammo and gun purchasing age to 21. In response, some students say this is not enough. More definitely needs to be done. Uh, common sense gun laws are something that really needs to change because after Parksland here, we were like, or after Parksland, after Sandy Hook, we were like, we're going to change, it's not going to happen again, and it does. And something really does need to be done, something that involves not just New York State, not just the East Coast, something that involves everyone. Yeah, I think there are tons of reforms that need to be made, not just gun control, but if Republicans really think that this is a mental health issue, why don't we put more money either into the school systems instead of taking money out of it and just put more money into health care and improving mental health and securing the health of us. I agree. And what do you think about them wanting to arm teachers now with guns? How do you feel about that? I think that's ridiculous and I think it's awful. I think that I, it's just... It's unfathomable to me that we are that we are spending the education bu budget to arm teachers rather than just making it more difficult for people with mental health issues and people, you know, pe young people to buy guns and make school a dangerous place. And honestly, I think that um, arming teachers would just add to that danger. Do you feel scared in school? Often, yes. I. It's. It's sometimes difficult for me to um, be in a class and be thinking. Um, I, I mentioned in my speech that I I think a lot about what I would do if a shooting happened in a, in a given moment. Very good. Thank you so much. Well, we are very proud of you. We're all here with you today. What is the overall goal that you want to achieve with this march, being out here? Definitely have. We want everyone to just be able to vote today because it's so important that just everyone to be aware that they have they do have a voice and simply voting in for our like, senators and things, it's very important. Um, what I really want to see come out of this is students being able to make their voices heard. Some people would look at me and say, she's small, she's an eighth grader, she doesn't really know what's going on in the world. The thing is, I do, but not everyone does. And I think that if students were really given the chance to learn about it and be able to say how they really feel, I think that would be something truly really special in the future. And if we can understand that our voice matters, I've seen programs where kids stand up and say, and they're absolutely correct, if you see someone sitting by themselves, go up and sit down next to them, be a friend, uh, stop it. It's a very broad thing, but the most important thing is to continue this. Don't let this be a photo op. Get the kids involved. I say to the kids, go to the, go to the school meetings, go to the village meetings, write your senators, demand action. The power is in the people. Life, living, and pursuit of happiness belongs to the people. It's very simple. This has just been an outstanding turnout here at the March for Our Lives event with many turning out to speak up and really raise their voice for a better cause. This has been Aurora Folks reporting for The Local Lives.